where he catches the biggest bass. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Chick fil A. Can I get a name? Larry. What can I get for you? Can I have a bacon and cheese biscuit meal with the. Alright, it'll be $6.49. We'll be happy to serve you at the window. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, we have a rainy day today. So I figured there's no better day than today to do a what's in my tackle bag slash a tackle organization video. We're gonna do it in my dad's garage today. These videos you guys seem to really like, especially like over time, you know, whenever it rolls back around the spring, I like to go ahead and post it in December so you can enjoy it in December. And then it seems like a lot of people kind of circle back around whenever it's time to get back into bass fishing because I show you what's in my tackle box. I'm gonna clean out all my tackle boxes because I did a lot of fishing this year. I caught a lot of fish on a lot of different lures. Everything needs to be reorganized. You know how it goes. It's a long day. You get back Back home it's about 10 o'clock at night you don't throw stuff where it's supposed to go i just put stuff in whatever box has the most available room in it say i'll clean it up later and then everything just ends up in one or two or three boxes that i use and it's just a whole mess i have a lot of stuff that i need to do today i have a lot of organization stuff i need to do i'm going to wipe out all of my tackle boxes and also i'm going to show you how i fish if I'm on the kayak, if I'm on the twin troller, if I'm fishing a pond, if I'm going on a buddy's boat. I have three different setups, so I'm gonna show you all three of those today. And I hope I provide a whole bunch of value. One, show you how I like to organize my stuff. Tackle organization stuff in the wintertime gets me by until spring rolls back around and it's back to pre-spawn, back to really good fishing. You can still catch them good in the winter, but like there's nothing like a good spring bite when all the fish are, when all the fish are just jacked up on shad and Mountain Dew. Stay tuned, super pumped for today's video. Leave me a comment down below. How do you organize your stuff? I think that's one thing that all fishermen can probably get a lot better is better organization than all fishermen like to just network off of each other and hey, what do you put your stuff in? Cause I've seen some pretty creative ideas. So stay tuned, this is just what works for me. When's the last time y'all seen this table? Looks like we're about to make some fishing lures. I might, if you wanna see a fishing lure video, leave a like on the video right now and go spam, I wanna see a fishing lure video in the comments. I need to I need to feel the energy before I set up my stuff again and start back making lures. So let me know in the comments, super simple. So all the stuff that you see on the table is stuff that I use weekly. I don't really use this tackle backpack that much because we did not do a whole bunch of pond fishing this year. But whenever we go and do some pond fishing, that tackle bag always comes with me. So I'm gonna go through everything, show y'all what I use, how I use it, and then we're gonna get everything out of all of the boxes. We're probably just gonna throw it all out on the table and put everything back where it needs to be at. So this is a Plano tackle bag. It's small and compact, but it has a lot of storage on the inside. It says 3,600 on the bottom, but I've put multiple 3,700 size boxes in this bag bag with no problem. So next is this new AFCO boat bag. Also, I have a code in the description coming up on Christmas time or it is Christmas time. So with the code in the description, you can save 10% on your first order on AFCO. So if you want any of this stuff that you see, if you like this rain jacket, anything on AFCO's website, 10% off with the code in the description. But this AFCO fishing bag, same exact thing. Anytime that I go on a boat with somebody else, I don't want to take that backpack. I don't want to take the black pack. The black pack's too big, this tackle bag, is big enough, but it's really not big enough. But this thing is perfect. I can put extra reels, line, whatever I need to put in there, snacks for the day. Everything fits in that bag and it all has its own separate compartment. Okay, so these two Plano day bags, these are normally for soft plastics. I just throw these in my truck at the beginning of the day. Load them up with all the generals, chigger crawls, whatever I think I'm gonna need for the day. Normally they're loaded with Maxent, so these bags smell like Maxent. If you can imagine what that smells like, they smell amazing. And I literally just throw a whole bunch of soft plastics that I think I might want to use for the day in these bags. Oh, and also more bags. Well, uh, this one has a tackle box in it. And so you got a little, got an A-rig in there, some soft plastics, you got some buzzing speed toads in there. Whenever I go out, whatever I think I'll need for the day, I just pack these bags at night or in the morning so I don't have to carry around a whole bunch of individual packs of soft plastics. Then last but not least, you've seen this thing probably a million times on the channel. This thing goes on the twin troller, kayaks, everything. This is the Yak Attack Black Pack Pro. I have a full video on this on the channel that I can link so you can check that video out. This is what I use 95% of the time when I'm out on the water. There's six 3,700 size boxes in there right now. There's three of the big ones and then three of the slim boxes and then there's another one on top. And I could probably fit another slim box back here in the back part of this 
box. And same thing goes for that box right there. Anything that I need throughout the day, whether it's stuff that still impacts or if it's in a tackle box, I just throw everything in that. Most of the time, that black pack is gonna be the only thing that I take out with me. Okay, and all of these boxes right here, this is a spinnerbait box. This is just a big Plano box right here. And then I have another box, another box, another box. This is a rattle trap box. This is a top water box, I wanna say, down here at the bottom. This is a box that I just put packs of baits in, like if I'm going out somewhere. Pretty much same thing with this one. These are just more alternative storage. You know, when I went on that Alex Road trip, I took the AFCO bag and I took all of these boxes and they just stay in the truck. They're just nice to have. You never know. We might plan to go fish slobber knockers all day, but those aren't work, so we have to switch over to spinner baits. And I have a box full of spinner baits, which is this one, and I have it with me and it's ready to go. And all these Plano boxes, not only do they fit a whole bunch of stuff, but they keep your stuff dry, and that's that's key. Rusted hooks, not fun. Changing hooks, not fun. Not the greatest at it, and it takes me way too long to change out a hook, so having good boxes that keep my stuff dry is a big plus. That sounded so salesy, I didn't like that. But they are good boxes. Guys, I promise I'm never, I'm not a salesman. I just, I record what I do every day and like I tell you about it, I don't want. Make your own decision, you know, make your own decision. But, all right, so let's get into some of these boxes because there's a lot of stuff in some of them. So, like a little six month review of this black pack right here. I absolutely loved it. I dropped it on some concrete a couple weeks ago. I broke the lip off right here and then another side of it off right here. But it still works fine. It was 100% waterproof. And I used to leave it outside sitting in my kayak because I went out every day. So like it was getting on the road. If it got wet, it'd be in the back of my truck going to a pond, 45 minute drive. So it would air out on the drive. But now I've been having to put it in the house. So it's a little wet on the inside. I need to dry it out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit before I start showing you all the tackle boxes. I think this thing, this is the 13 by 13 or 13 by 16. 13 by 16 box. Yeah, so this is the 13 by 16 box. They make a 13 by 13, 13 by 16, and a 16 by 16. And I have absolutely loved this thing so far. I've never had the original black pack. This is my first one. And I think this thing is a must have for kayak anglers. Once again, I started in a milk crate. I feel like I should say that. Like just about every other kayak fisherman probably started with just a regular milk crate. And I have two of them actually sitting over there. Actually, I have my first one I ever used. So that box is $100. There is nothing wrong with one of these at all. Like if anything happens to that one or if it breaks anymore, I'm probably gonna go back to one of these. And this is really nice, but it's nice to have something, you know, just looks a little bit more professional and it's, I like being able to keep my stuff dry out of the elements, out of the weather and just keep my tackle boxes in a little bit better shape than in this. So the reason why I told you that the water is getting into that box is because they get on these boxes and they get like dingy. This is my terminal box. So of course, you know, a terminal box is going to get dingy, lead weight, stuff like that. It bangs up against the top and like the top of this box is gonna get dirty. Your compartments in here are gonna get dirty. That's, if your stuff is clean, that means you're not fishing enough. So, I mean, you can't ever be mad at dirty stuff, dirty fishing stuff especially. But I think it is a good thing to do at least at least once a year. You should probably do it maybe two, three times a year depending on how much you fish. But at least once a year, get all your stuff out, clean it. Uh, rods, reels, everything. I need to do my rods and reels and that'll probably be a separate video because that's gonna take a little minute. That'll be a day's job. So we're gonna try to give as much value in as well as be as productive as I possibly can because I have a lot of stuff that I need to do today. So I'll probably time lapse through some of it, talk when I need to, time lapse more. So. All my boxes, we're gonna pop everything out of all these boxes. I have some Lysol wipes somewhere. Okay, so I put the Lysol on the inside of this and I just thought about that these are fishing lures and everything that I put in this box after I clean it out, it's gonna smell like Lysol. So we're probably just gonna do water and a paper towel.
I've been standing here for three hours, two hours, three hours. I got here at 11.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30. Yeah, three hours doing that, but it's well worth it. So I'm gonna go through all the boxes. I'm gonna show you what I got. I already showed you everything that I used to carry the boxes around and all my soft plastics, all that stuff is self-explanatory. All right, so this box right here, this is going to be like a junk box, not junk fishing lures, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna start throwing all of my stuff in here. At least that's the plan right now. You know, that probably won't last. I have some jerk bait, some hit sticks, and an A-rig in here right now that I really don't have a home for in any of my other tackle boxes. So. Yeah, that's gonna be the junk box this year. Next, we have this bag. This is kind of just some more extra stuff. We got some super glue, some extra treble hooks, and some big crankbaits in there. Then also some small, like, creek fishing spinner bait that I'll use on the Cahaba and some other creeks that I'll be fishing this year, upcoming year, 2023. Man, 2022 feels like it flew by. So this box right here, top water box. We got poppers, 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 frogs, frogs, walking baits, walking baits, cane walkers, chopos. So. Pretty self-explanatory. All this stuff you have seen throughout the year, like this little, this chopo right here, creek fishing chopo, that's all I use it for. I only really throw it on creek. I've caught a whole bunch of fish on it. Also, we have the big beaver down there too. Um, all that stuff is just top water stuff. Frit sides, frit sides, frit sides. These are one of my favorite crankbaits. The second I threw one, I probably, I think I caught my first fish on the frit side within five minutes of opening the pack and I've been hooked ever since. This side's right here, but just the red version. Too. Yeah, so frit size, they're really good shallow water crankbaits, cold time, cold time, cold water lures. That's when they really excel, but I, I catch fish on these things year round. If a regular crankbait isn't working, you have some that are silent and then also they're coming out with the clicking frit sides now that have a little rattle in them that are gonna be like when you cast them out, it's gonna be super sweet, so. All right, next box, jerk baits, jerk baits, jerk baits. We got not that many jerk baits. We need to re up on some jerk baits, re up on our stunna selection. But like I said, guys, I buy a whole bunch of stuff at the beginning of the year, get a whole bunch of stuff at the beginning of the year, pretty much fish throughout the whole year, lose all of it, and then rebuy it the next year because I fish at least three times a week. So, like for eight hours a day, minimum three times a week, but try to go five, you know, Monday through Friday. But you know how it goes. All right, next, terminal box. We got it all cleaned up. Uh, this is the one that we put the Clorox wipe in, so all of our hooks are probably, all of our hooks are probably gonna smell like Clorox wipes, and we are okay with that. They're gonna smell like Clorox wipes and Max Scent. That's gonna be an interesting combination. If we don't catch anything on the Texas rig next year, it's because all of our hooks smell like Clorox wipes. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we got a little bit of everything in this box. We got bullet weights, bullet weights, wacky rig, punching, which is something that I'm trying to work on learning this year. 3-aught, 4-aught, 5-aught, strength shank, round bend. Those are kind of mixed in. I didn't separate all those. I just kind of go in, grab whatever I need. We got shaky heads, underspin stuff, pegs for Texas rigs, weighted belly hooks. Let me show you guys these. Let me put y'all on something. So if you're like me, you're not that patient. I'm not patient at all. I'm not diagnosed ADHD, but I probably am a little ADHD. So if you're like me, I fish like power jerk shads. I used to be really into them. Power jerk shads, flukes, stuff like that. Really, this is the only way that I like to fish flukes now is with the belly weighted hook because it's just a lot faster. You know, I don't have to cast it out. I can cast it a lot farther, first of all. I don't have to cast it out, wait 15 seconds before I can start retrieving it before it's like hit a good depth. So belly weighted hooks, a must have. But yeah, in this box, we got Ned rig stuff, Ned heads and extra treble hooks. And then also we always keep red treble hooks in there. I don't really throw red treble hooks that much, but you know, some people switch out their treble hooks and put uh, red in the front because they think that bass will target that red hook and I'm not uh, I'm not knocking that but I don't really get that deep into the terminal box to like Make those connections y'all know me. I'm not I'm a fisherman, but I ain't like oh I threw the 3 8 ounce Tungsten weight today. You gotta have it or you're not gonna catch any fish. That's not me. You can catch a fish on anything. Honestly, it's not that complicated. So next, big swim baits. This is a box that I have been working on for two years now. And I don't have the craziest collection, but I I'm working on building it. I want to build it up. I can pull out a swim bait, tie it on, catch a fish. I have a swim bait for every application. So we have two bull shads in here. And then also we have a baby bull shad. We have this one I bought from Texas at the Classic. It's like a little bluegill pattern. I've caught a couple on this. And then also, I need a bigger box to put these in because these barely, barely fit in here. I have to like 
put them in the right way. I'm just gonna show you all the bull sheds. I have like the Gantrell Juniors and the Mag Drafts, of course, but this white swim bait right here has caught a lot of fish, a lot of two, three, four pound bass this year. I found a pond with clear water, and it seems like something about a good clear water pond, they just tear this thing up. So I'm looking forward to exploring next year and hopefully finding a couple more like clear water ponds so I can go throw this thing, hopefully hook up on some more big bass. I'll tell you, there's nothing like a good big swim bait eat. Like you cast it out there, you just feel that, and you go, oh my gosh, it's huge. Because you know there's a size minimum with this. I mean, yeah, you'll catch a pounder on it every now and then, but. Most of the time, whatever eats this is gonna be two plus. And high end of that, not two plus, like two plus, but probably a four pounder, if you see what I'm saying, so. Whew, I could geek out over fish and tackle. Like, I'm still fairly new to stuff, and I don't do, like, as much research as I should to, like, figure out what, out, what all new is coming, because, you know, I'm a big Berkeley guy, so. But, I mean, I'll tell you guys, fish and tackle is one thing that, like, genuinely excites me. Seeing new stuff come out, seeing, like, JDM stuff and what people throw in Japan and all around the world is super cool. All right, so next box, jigs. And really the next two boxes are the same. They're the same style of box. I think this is a jig box, but I have another one with bladed jigs in it, slobber knockers. So we have all of, we kind of tried to organize them by color. Then we put swim jigs in the back. I'm not too fond of swim jigs. I did catch a 5.7 on a swim jig when I was trying to force myself to learn it at the beginning of the year this year. but. We caught a 5.7 on this one right here. Berkeley just came out with some new swim jigs. So I'm gonna have to throw these a little bit more, like throwing them down grass lines, stuff like that. I'm starting to I'm starting to figure out bass fishing a little bit, guys. I'm telling you, I'm not gonna say I'm getting good at it, but I'm starting to like figure it out. You know, all I need is water temperature, depth, bottom composition. <sighs> Give me five minutes. Uh, this is bladed jig, slobber knockers. So we have all of our slobber knockers up here. These just came out this year. so. Before that, we had a whole array of chatterbaits, $4.99. I paid $4.99 just like everybody else. I never bought any jackhammers just because I was like, I can't justify spending $15 on a chatterbait. But we got the slobber knockers now and I can spend, they're worth it, 100%. Now I think, I can truly say that there is a night and day difference between a slobber knocker and like the regular chatterbait. So this is a box full of liplesses that I have had since I started bass fishing. All these red ones that you see up here, these are all the Dick's brand Jawbone, and they used to go on sale two for 10. And my mom would like give me a 10 off 50 coupon. She would buy $40 worth of stuff, and then I'd buy like $10 worth of fish and stuff every time we would go into Dick's. So shout out to you, mom, if you're watching this. I feel like I've said that literally on every tackle video I've done. And last but not least, this is our last box right here. This is, it started off as a money badger box, and then I realized I didn't have any more boxes to put just other crankbaits in. So this is money badgers and pretty much everything else. We got all different sizes. My favorite money badger, if you're wondering. Favorite money badger is this one, but just a size down. This is the 6.75 size. I like the five or 6.25, one of those two. It dives like seven to 10 feet and I've caught. It was my day saver crankbait until I lost it. Oh yeah, got one more box. I'm not done yet, got one more box. Got the spinnerbait box. This is the first time this box has ever actually been organized. So Berkeley also came out with spinnerbaits this year and I have been throwing, I've been throwing them a little bit. I really have kind of focused on slobber knockers when it comes to stuff with like blades on it. But, and I don't know if I've caught a fish on the Berkeley spinnerbait shit. Huh? So in this box, we have a little bit of everything. White, chartreuse, red. Let me just pull some of these out because Berkeley came out, or Uncle Edwin came with some pressure, some cool colors. Like, this just screams like Amazon peacock bass to me. A little chartreuse, a little bit of green, a little bit of orange in there with a small, small Colorado blade. We got a, kind of like a natural color. It's not necessarily white, it's more like that white, little dirty, but not dirty color with the big shiny blade with the orange little, the big gold blade with the orange little, got the orange blade on there too. Then we got the red, you know, you can never go wrong with red. This is a good red time of year right now. All the way from now until spring, you can always, you can, I feel like you can get away with throwing red year round, but now until spring, late spring, late post spawn, or into post spawn, I think you pretty much good with throwing red. We got some white in here. We got a little bit of everything. I think a couple of these have trailers on them too. You know what, actually, I take that back. I take that back. I have caught a fish, because I caught a fish on this one right here. Yeah, so all these things are super sweet, guys. If you wanna check out, next time you're at your local tackle shop, definitely just pick up one of these packs, look at it, check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about all the stuff. And then also, Berkeley came out with a lot of new stuff this year, like slobber knockers, spinner baits, 
money badgers and a lot of really really good lures so i'm super excited for 2023 to really have a full year to go around to all my different ponds throw all the stuff thank you for hanging out with me the hunt for a deer is still going on uh yesterday actually i went and bought a whole bunch of game cameras and i got some pictures last night that's going to be kind of like its own little thing own little mini series also i talked to my cousin donnie last night and he also showed me some really good pictures of some really good deer and i think what our main problem is we're gonna have to get out of those green fields and we're gonna have to go into the woods in which that's pretty self-explanatory you know we've been hunting these green fields for the past what 15 like these green fields have been here forever that being said that's probably going to be the focus on the channel after the rest of these fishing videos get uploaded and we're going to stick to hunting until probably for the full month of january we're going to do a lot of hunting content stay tuned thanks for all the support guys don't forget to fish them hard and have a great day i will see y'all later peace in a bag i'm racing the clock look at them block watching them block used to see this on my sleep when i had shit on my thoughts in the car i really was lost now i'm public with the soundscapes also, if there's anything that you saw that I didn't cover, that I didn't talk about, or anything that you want to know, sizes, anything like that, just leave a comment down below. Thanks again. Peace. See y'all later. I don't know what to. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs>